Hey guys, Desolate Magic here, and we've got the first look, the first card previews, a little bit of art spoilers for the upcoming set, Duskmorn House of Horror, because I guess we're already moving past Bloomboro. That's right, Bloomboro is right around the corner, the hype cannot possibly be higher for anybody who's into that set for some reason, I'm hearing rumors that that's not a very high number, and so why not, you know, pull up the hype train to Duskmorn, a set which people are way more excited about. Although, I was excited when we heard about a paragraph about it, now seeing it, I am not. So, um, yeah. It's just uncreative tropes and kind of lazy. So they put out a trailer, and, I mean, spoiler alert, they have televisions and, like, creepy broadcasts, and there's a card that just outright is a ring reference. And they kind of tried to do, like, a ring parody for their little teaser trailer that is put out on YouTube, but, uh, <laughs> oh, well. I made one of my own. Let's see if I can do better than a multi-million dollar company. Vote down below who won. There once was a girl. No one dare speak her name. In death, she seeks vengeance. Once you see her story. My name is Jeff. You have seven days to live. Because she does not forget. And she does not forgive. So they have the Planeswalker's Guide, which is like everything you need to know about the um, plane. I might cover that. This isn't really a lore-heavy channel, but I'm kind of interested in what's going on. So you guys probably are too. Let me know if you want me to cover that. But for now, we're just going to take a look at what's going on here. Oh yeah, EMF stuff, ghost hunting. They're doing that. They're going 80s horror meets 90s cringe cable TV ghost hunting crap. Which I think everybody after this many years knows is fake. Basically nobody but morons, more so than even the 90s, are into ghost hunting crap. I think they saw the popularity of, um, what's that one game? You know, that one ghost hunting indie game. And then they're like, oh, let's do a set. And then, you know, three years later when they finally made the set, uh, oops. So this is coming out September 27th, which is a lot after August 2nd, the release of Bloomboro. So the setup is basically Nashi, the son of planeswalker Tamio, has vanished Ooh, through a mysterious door. There is only one clue to his whereabouts, a glitchy warped recording. That's right, they're doing like actual televisions in this set. Uh, trust me, this is the tip of the iceberg. So it's a warped recording of a new world full of terrors inspired by horror media of the 80s. Uh, through the modern day, you'll join the ensemble cast of Nico Aris, everybody's favorite planeswalker, Tyvek House Rapkel, Zamone Wola from that one Harry Potter ripoff set, and Kaido Shizuki. Spoiler alert because they're doing Japanese horror too because they couldn't really decide on one theme so they just did all of them. Whatever it'll sell. Throw everything at the wall if people want to throw money back at you. More power to you. Who cares about a consistent theme? Oh, and the Wanderer who can basically kill anyone in one hit. So like, <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, that I'll take that one. So I guess since our last episode, Tamio had a kid. I don't know if that was ever canon. And, um... Nico hasn't received psychological help for their gender dysphoria, so not much has happened, I guess. So I threw up some art here of the different characters, what we see so far. Um, yeah, the Wanderer is going to whoop some ass. I feel like this would have been funny. Tell me this wouldn't be funny. Kaya versus the, the Haunted House. 2.0 because remember in a story a while ago, she just goes into this like super haunted house and they just see room to room to room and just hear like screaming as she is taking out them ghosts like like it ain't nothing dude that was like the coolest scene i'm telling you i don't know about you guys but i like kaya and she's a little op but that's kind of the point i mean she's she's cool as shit her, her lineup of abilities really cool that scene really cool if she would have been here it would have been a real short set that's all i'm gonna say Although, she's more ghosts because her blades can kill ghosts, uh, and this seems more like demonic and general evil. So this might be a little over her head, but I think that would have been kind of playing on easy mode, so they threw in the Wanderer instead. What I don't like, and I haven't read the Planeswalker's Guide, so I might be way off here, but from what I've heard described... Oh, a door opened to another plane. What a fun coincidence that a bunch of Planeswalkers can now go to another plane without being able to Planeswalk. That is so ridiculous. 
I don't know, a door opened because story. That's never happened before in the history of anything. You gotta be kidding me. I mean, you got the realm scars or whatever the hell those stupid things are called, but this ain't one of them, I bet. I don't know, man. This is a bit of a stretch. Very convenient. All right, so in their journey through the house, because the whole plane is a house, uh, the rescue team will encounter many of the spooky inhabitants of Duskborn. Magic's take on a modern horror plane, combining creepy aesthetics with the epic worlds that players know and love. But even in a harrowing plane like this, there is always light of hope. Yeah, it's called overwhelming force and violence until you get what you want. Okay, welcome to being a hero in the magic world. Creeping around with ghost detectors and shit. Like, if the ghosts are running away from you, do you really need to detect them? Should have brought Kaya. So you'll have to overcome impossible odds, discover terrifying new entities, and survive the night alongside your friends in Duskmoor House of Horror. When it arrives on September 27th at your local gaming store, online retailers like Amazon and everywhere else that Magic the Gathering products are sold. Woo! So these are the logos uh, you guys saw in the background here, a bunch of art from the set. Uh, this is really just a reveal of like all the stuff. So we got the... The DSK expansion symbol, the DSC expansion, which is the commander, because they're always going to do that. And then the special guest expansion symbol, which looks an awful lot like the uh, game night thing or whatever. The, the game game day, I don't know, that one five player thing. Actually, I think they made it a star, but it was four player and nobody knew why. If you're wondering what special guest is, it's um totally, definitely not masterpieces, but 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 it is masterpieces. So this is uh, one of the play boosters in the play booster box. We got Nerdy Geometry Girl. Um, I think they're trying to kind of build a really weird Scooby-Doo gang, but this isn't a comedy horror. I, I don't think they know what direction they're going. It looks like they went 10 different directions stylistically, and I think this is going to be a train wreck. The last couple stories have had plot holes you could drive a truck through, so um, can't wait to see this one. And I was excited about this, dude. I was excited about this plane since they announced it, and I'm pissed. This looks like garbage. So this is the uh, collector's booster, aka the one you want if you want any semblance of getting cards worth value. Uh, you still won't get your money out of it. Don't gamble. Speaking of that, I, if I gotta say the magic G word, um, I turned my gaming channel into a gaming channel. It now covers gambling. So um, it's gonna be safe, responsible gambling. Probably you know a little bit of tilting it in your favor because you guys know I am the worst AP player in the entire country as far as prolific, not skill level. Now that I'm the best. Just pulled in another nine bills at the casino two nights ago. What's up? And that was after they gave me a free $75 gift certificate to the fancy restaurant. They're paying me to rip them off. Anyway, it's mostly going to be comedy. So if you haven't seen a full-blown, actual, high-quality, high-editing skill, high-I-know-what-I'm-doing-on-YouTube, pun intended, like high comma, I get it. Yeah, go check it out, Desolator Gaming. If you're not into gambling or gaming content or dumb comedy, um, don't go watch it. I'm still looking at a place where we can film, though, so that's going to kind of change the success and the tone of the channel. Because if it's all online, I don't know if people are going to go for that, which means I'm probably not going to go for it. So, uh, okay, back to this. We already knew about the commander thing. They're doing Arch Enemy. Cool. Go watch my other video on it. This is the uh, bundle. Which, uh, that's kind of cool, actually. They got a really nice looking die there. That's gonna be worth some money. Don't sleep on the bundles. Those are usually, like, the good money. I mean, now that they did collector's boosters, it's less so. But it always was the best value if you did the math. Then they've got, check this out. I mean, this is cool. I don't like putting 80s televisions in, in a magic set. I like that about as much as, like, future space Japan high-tech crap that everybody also equally hated. But, uh... As far as the product goes, that's cool as hell. I mean, just look at that. Come on. So that's the Nightmare Bundle. Typically, any kind of special bundle is just some weird holiday thing, um, and it, it's a terrible value. I would almost buy this just for the box, but I haven't bought anything for Watsy in four years because, you know, screw them. And then we've got the uh, pre-release kit. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Black and neon green, that's actually a thing. So uh, this may shock you. But they're doing a whole bunch of special trims on the cards. I know. I'm shocked, too. Here's something that might actually shock you. And uh, monitor punch warning. Don't say I didn't warn you. Pre-order a Duskborn House of Horror Play Booster box on Amazon US starting today through July 31st and receive a code on September 27th redeemable for special Duskborn-themed MTG Arena sleeve. Ooh, it's like installing Firefox on your cards. I don't know what this is. By the way, digital render, not final sleeve, because we're Watsy. We don't turn in our homework on time. 
It's what we do, damn it. So the fine print, you must purchase a Play Booster box directly from Amazon US, not your local store. Screw you. Paraphrased hyphen Desolator Magic. Codes are valid for a year and totally won't be sold on GreatVikingsGames.com, a former channel sponsor. Shout them out for free because if you want discount arena codes, you know, there you go. If you want to sell yours too, by the way. So they say, plus local gaming stores can get it on the fun. <laughs> you put that awfully close to the sentences about Amazon, you absolute assholes. So uh, buy a box promo while supplies last. You can get Twitching Doll. Oh boy. So we're going to get into the real cards here. We got, uh, okay, so Twitching Doll, it's a two-cost green artifact creature spider toy. That's just wonderful. Um, <laughs> if you tap it, you add one mana of any color, put a nest counter on it. Then if you tap it, sack it, create a 2-2 green spider creature token with reach for each counter on Twitching Doll. Activate only as a sorcery. That is ridiculously powerful. Holy crap. Okay, it's a lightning rod. You can't do that at instant speed. If they're going to blow it up, they're going to blow it up. But it might draw a kill spell earlier. And then you don't get no spiders. But then, well, when you're done using it or when you think they might be about to attack it, then you got to sack it. So there's a little bit of tact in there, a little bit of backfire. But, um, yeah, this is, this is power creep. So we're going to see the power creep ramp right back up right after rotation. Not even taking one break. Although, Bloomboro. Uh, they're also doing some kind of weird deal, which I'm totally sure your store, which is struggling to stay in business, will totally honor and not just take most of them and, and sell them on the side. But any customers who purchase a sealed display, which is a of Duskborn House of Horror play boosters or collector's boosters, will also receive one Duskborn House of Horror collector booster. A ridiculous value of typically, I don't know, 20 to 30 bucks, something like that. Like I said, haven't bought them in a while. This promotion is for in-store purchase or pickup only. I'm sure your store won't just sell them loose when they get them for free as a promo. Yeah, they'll just give away thousands of dollars. That's that's a great idea. Anyway, um, you could celebrate spooky season at your local game store with a special WPN trick-or-treat Halloween activity, commander open house events, or on Halloween weekend at MagicCon Vegas. Ooh, we'll uh, have more to share as the witching hour approaches, but get ready for a magic event unlike any other. Who's this dork? He should perhaps try looking to the left, just saying. He's wearing an 80s blazer. Where did he get that? Did he stop in, like, Neo Space Japan or whatever? My god. So they say previews start September 1st. Uh, they, they, they don't say when leaks are going to start. <laughs> that could be any day now. So subscribe if you want to really get informed on what's up. All right, I'm going to speed through this because who gives a crap? Um, okay. Oh, they're doing full art lands again. Who would have thought? Oh boy. Wow. Then see if you can keep up with all this. They're doing a double exposure and texturized foil double exposure. So that was uh, basically what people would do to fake a ghost photo back when photography actually used photographs. You would just expose it, then expose it again on like a black and white, and it would overlay it. So in other words, like saying everything's fake. I don't know why they thought that. Like I said, totally confused. Very low effort, going a million different directions. Just, I saw this in a movie once. Yeah, put it on the card. Hey, this used to be a thing. I've, I've heard this term before. Yeah, put it on the card. It doesn't have to make sense. It's just creepy. I think that they legitimately thought that double exposures were a way to, like, detect ghosts instead of a way to, like, be fraudulent. So those two cards are the Wandering Rescuer. Hello. Five cost. Double white. Three, four. Legendary creature. Human samurai. Noble. Flash convoke. Nice. Double strike. Other tapped creatures you control the hexproof. Remember, the Wanderer lost her spark. Yeah, that card's powerful. I mean, it's five. It's legendary, but it's powerful. Then we've got Toby, Beastie Befriender. Oh, good. Uh, it's a three cost one, one legendary creature human wizard. When Toby, Beastie Befriender enters the battlefield, but they no longer put that so that they could fit more stupid words on the card. Create a four, four white beast creature token with this creature can't attack or block alone. As long as you do, if you double block with the beast and her, they're assigning damage to her. So that falls apart. But uh, as long as you control four more creature tokens, creature tokens, you control a flying. <laughs> Great. A four, four and a one, one for three. With a flying option. That's what the power level is going to be post rotation. And uh, this is the textured photo. It's the double exposure textured version. All right. 
And this time, instead of going with scratch and sniff, because they didn't know what like the house would smell like, they actually coated the textured foils with um, a, a mild hallucinogen that'll make you see things. And they fully expect people to just like lose their shit in the middle of F&M when it kicks in. So make sure you bring your pepper spray. Then they cranked up the cringe to 99 with Paranormal Frame. Ooh, ghost hunting with neon 80s. That's tonally confused, to put it lightly. Oh, creepy, but also, you know, workout aerobic neon colors. What? There might have been a movie poster here and there that was neon colors and creepy zombies, but they just don't go together. That That's just stupid. So they're calling this the paranormal frame. I should probably read the card. Uh, so come back wrong. It's a three cost black sorcery. Destroy target creature. If a creature card is put into a graveyard this way, return it to the battlefield under your control. Sacrifice it. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Now, remember, it doesn't gain haste. So you might get like an ETB or something or a death trigger. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? Then we got Chainsaw, because why not? Sure, that exists. Does Petroleum exist? Does it run on mana? What? What? What is any of this crap? How did they get televisions? Where did the TVs come from? It's two cost red artifact equipment. When Chainsaw enters, it deals three damage up to one target creature. Whenever one or more creatures die, put a rev counter on Chainsaw. A equipped creature gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of rev counters on Chainsaw. Equip three. So it does nothing by default. But if you can kill something, you can get going. This card doesn't have to directly be responsible for the death, so I think that'll actually kind of work. But this is just encouraging Red Rush right after a uh, rotation. That's You don't want to crank the power level this early. You just don't. But we're only losing a third of the cards anyway, so you know what? What the hell? If you want to sell the set, crank up the power level. I guess that's probably what they were going for. This is such bullshit. So next up, Mirror Monster. What the hell? <laughs> Six Black Doomsday Excruciator. It's a 6-6 flying creature demon. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it was cast, because a lot of demons can free cast because they've done screwed up the power level, each player exiles all but the bottom six cards of the library face down. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card. So they get six turns until they lose. What a bullshit card that is. Next up, Screaming Nemesis. It's a three cost, uh, three, three red creature spirit with haste. And when it is, ooh, it's a mythic too. When it is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. If the player is dealt damage this way, they can't gain life for the rest of the game. An ongoing silent effect that you just have to remember even when the permanent's gone. Wow, that just screams, we don't give a shit about paper anymore, go play digital. Well, that's an annoying card that you get to deal with for the next, uh, would it be three years? 2.8 2. 2. years? Yay! Then we've got the Japan Showcase. Oh, boy. So we got Overlord of the Hot Woods. It's a uh, five-cost mythic, ooh, green 6-5, enchantment creature avatar horror. It has impending four, which we'll get to that in a second. And uh, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, create a tapped colorless land token named Everywhere that is every basic land type. We'll circle back to impending, but um, it has impending four pay three. But uh, then we got enduring tenacity. It's a four cost double black four three enchantment creature snake glimmer. Another mythic, which if there's 15 mythics in the set, which I doubt they even do that anymore. They are stretching every last thing they can do to make you pay a little bit more money. I think one of the last sets actually had like 40 mythics. I'm not even kidding. But uh, yeah, okay. Whatever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Because we need another one of those in Commander, and uh, whenever Enduring Tenacity dies, if it was a creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. It's an enchantment. So, if they put in parentheses, it's not a creature. It loses creature type would be the proper way to write that. But sure, the way you did it is cool too. Then we got Special Guests, which is totally not just Masterpieces. Oh boy, Collected Company, one of the biggest mistakes in all of card design and the sole reason by itself that if I was at a court of law and they were trying to determine if Aaron Forsyth should be fired from Magic the Gathering, the answer would be yes, because of an interview he did about this card. Oh, but this, you've been talking about it for eight years. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it for another eight years. I'm never going to stop mentioning it. The guy's an idiot. So first, let's check out Delirium. That's right, literally just Delirium is back. Cool. A lot of blowing stuff up going on in this set, so welcome to more control-heavy shit that we almost just sort of got rid of with rotation at this point. So four more card types in the graveyard, and you get Delirium. Oh, it's in your graveyard, by the way. 
So Mr. FOMO here is a two cost, two, three red enchantment creature nightmare. Uh, when fear of missing out enters uh, the battlefield, discard a card, then draw a card. And then what it with delirium, when it attacks for the first time each turn, Oh, that's nice. Um, if there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard, untap target creature. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Oh, who didn't see that coming? Great, my favorite mechanic. And it's on a two-cost red rare. It's like they're trying to kill standard, okay? That's what they're really going after to try and kill in this haunted house, is the standard constructed format. Because nobody wants to play against this shit. I mean, it'll take longer to get delirium, but this is just so f***ing annoying. Then we got this bullshit that's supposed to uh, promote delirium, I guess, whatever. Um, so nowhere to run, two cost enchantment, flash. When nowhere to run enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets negative three, negative three, till end of turn. Creatures your opponent's control can be the targets of spells and abilities as though they didn't have hexproof. Ward abilities of those, triggers, uh, of those creatures don't trigger. That has literally nothing to do with Delirium. Delirium affects your own graveyard. They actually just put up this card as a mistake because they said, these cards help support Delirium. Well, are you going to target your own creature? Well, no, because it says creature and opponent controls gets negative three, negative three, so I guess you aren't. Whatever, dude. Okay, so then we got Leyline of Hope. I think that's a reprint, actually. Uh, if it's in your opening hand, you may begin with it on the battlefield, which is the opposite of putting it in your graveyard. Uh, if you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. As long as you have gained seven or more life than your starting total, or your cu current life total. I read that wrong. Creatures you control have plus two plus two. Very powerful A-line, arguably the best one. Nothing to do with Delirium. Did I read this right? It says, the set bringing with it... This set bringing with it the return of the Delirium mechanic, first appearing in Shadows over Innistrad, Delirium cares about having four more card types in your graveyard. As such, the set contains a wide array of card types that synergize with the ability. The first two do not in any way synergize with that ability. That is amazing. All right. Number three, Cursed Recording. It's a four-cost double red artifact. Once again, televisions are in this set for some reason. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a time counter on cursed recording. Oh God. They're literally doing seven days from the ring. Then if there are seven or more time counters on it, remove the counters and it deals 20 damage to you. Oh, cause you watched the tape. Oh, you shouldn't have done that dumbass. Uh, tap it when you next cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Whatever keeps red people from playing two cost on down, sure. That's all I'm going to say. All right, impending. Here's it fully spelled out on the real version of the card. So uh, if you cast a spell for its impending cost, it enters with four time counters on it. It's little just suspend. It isn't a creature until the last one is removed, but I think you still get the enchantment part. At the beginning of your end step, remove a time counter from it. So uh, yeah, there you go. You get some of the effect, but you can't attack with it. Which means you see it coming by its effect before it's coming. That's actually really clever for a haunted house set. Then we've got room cards. What are those? They're not going to tell you, but here's a picture of some dude. Uh, so they're only willing to show the art for now, but we've got this room, which I, if I saw this, I would maybe avoid it. I would not walk into here. It's a little, little friendly advice there. And uh, oh, they show off another uh, arch enemy card that wasn't in the arch enemy announcement. Thanks, guys. I totally want to go re-edit my last video. It's time bends to my will. Ooh. When you set this scheme in motion, take an extra turn after this one. Skip the untap step of that turn. Well, that's annoying. Well, that's about it for now. Um, they are going to do an open house themed on this uh, November 1st through the 3rd, which is weirdly after the, well, they are doing a trick-or-treat event for Halloween. So, okay, October 25th through the 31st. So watch out for that. I mean, get wrecked on candy, go play some hopefully not standard constructed format. I mean, I'm into that. So what do you guys think of it? It went from, ooh, an interesting new thing, and then just, now they just ripped off a bunch of other stuff, threw it together, and it's a mishmash of crap that makes no sense. And then Planeswalkers are still there on a brand new plane for some reason, even though they lost their spark. It, it's just so thrown together and lazy, and the last couple sets of lore have been god-awful. It made Mike... From the Magic Historian on his lore channel, Fantasy Geographic, take a break from covering the lore. It was that bad. That would be from the Yeehaw set, where they opened up a vault and then found a furry. F*** me. Well, yeehaw to you guys too, and I'll see you next time. Holy shit.